It'd been a fine sunny spell of weather in Scotland and I was keen to try and get out and enjoy it because you never know when that's going to end, especially in Scotland. So I didn't have much time and I left late in the day, arriving around about 6 o'clock and soon got my shoes on and my camping gear on and headed up the, the mountain looking for a nice wild camping experience to see me through the night. Ooh. I tell you what, it is warm. Oh. <sighs> Get my breath back. It's a really warm, balmy, Scottish summer evening. And it's just gorgeous. There's a wee breeze, which I'm very, very thankful for. But it's been really warm. There's some high pressure, which is sat over the UK at the moment. And uh, this is the result. Some lovely blue skies and perfect camping conditions. Well, hopefully perfect camping conditions. There is a rather black looking cloud <laughs> behind the camera. So I'm, holding, I'm hoping that it's not building into, into a nasty surprise for me later on. But uh, anyway, I'm hoping to camp on the summit of uh, a Munro, a mountain in, Scot in Scotland over 3,000 feet. And this one sits around about 1,000 metres. So yeah, I better, uh, I better shut up and get cracked on because yeah the time is now half past six and uh, I've still got, I've, I've, I'm not running out of time but I'm hoping to get the tent up just to enjoy the uh, the summer the summer sun and uh, chill in the tent before sunset so let's go it's up ahead and with this being a Monroe the path is pretty good all the way up, in fact. And before long, I was heading up and gaining height, and yeah, the views were opening up behind me. It was rather lovely. And as I said before, there was just that lovely breeze providing a wee bit of coolness because the air was really warm, and also keeping those midges at bay. Ooh. Well, this is not the top. <laughs> I've still got the mountains over here. Still got a fair few metres to go. Probably I need to drop down. This is a false summit. Um, I need to drop down here, and then there's, there's about I don't know 150, 200 meters of vertical steepness to do before getting to the top of the mountain, which is uh, looking nice over here. I'm going to be in the shade shortly as well, so that'll be quite nice. But it's lovely. There's a bit more of a breeze up here, which which is what I was wanting and uh, expecting. So I'm hoping it's going to be the same at the top to keep the beasties at bay, which is good. But look at this view behind me. I don't know if you can see it. This is, uh, this is a mountain called Ben Lors over here and it's the 10th highest mountain in Scotland and uh, it's, a, it's a cracking walk as well and from where I am, you'll not see it, I can look down at the dam and the loch and up the valley but my eye keeps getting drawn to this, uh, this pool and this climb that I need to do now so it's, uh, it's cracking on a bit, it's uh, after 7 o'clock now it's going to take me a wee while to get up here so let's, let's talking, <laughs> let's get walking Ooh. After a wee while longer, I could see that final sting in the tail, that final pull up to the summit, and I just started on up it. Under normal conditions, and when I say normal conditions, just hiking with a day sack, this is a breeze, it's so easy, but with the uh, the wild camping gear and all my camera gear, and I had a bit of water as well, it was, yeah, it was a bit tiring, but I eventually made it to the summit of the mountain, Mildan Termakin. Look at this. <laughs> so this is the summit and it's just it's going to be a fantastic evening. I can see out to the north and the west it's just la that, that layers you get where it's kind of hazy but you get layers and layers of mountains. The different shades of grey just get darker and or lighter and lighter the further away you go. It looks fantastic. Anyway, 
This is the summit of the mountain, and it's a wee bit rocky here, but the rest of the terrain up here in this, this area of the highlands is very grassy, and there's absolutely no issues with me. Sometimes I have issues, or I, I get worried when I come up to the summit to do a summit camp, that it's going to be quite tricky to find a flat, level piece of grass, but I can tell you here, <laughs> everywhere is flat and grassy, well not flat and grassy, but there's numerous areas for me to, to find the pitch. So that's what I'm going to do now, I'm going to go and uh, put the tent up, and then just take this in. Uh, uh, it's just uh, it's just going to be a great, great uh, evening. Fantastic. Right, let's go and uh, get the tent set up. So I headed off the summit looking for a pitch. And there was quite a few places, and this was one of them. I thought a nice view over to Ben Lawers would be fine. But you know what? I went on just a little bit further and found a, a flatter area. And I thought the views out west would be more suitable so for some photography later on catching the the sunset i might have been wrong in that stay tuned later on for the sunrise where the views the other way might have been a bit better anyway i decided on the pitch and it was soon time for that yeah familiar set of tasks of getting the tent out unpacking the bags get just basically getting everything set up for for camp and i thought i'd have lots of time but by now it was it was getting on a wee bit it was fairly yeah fairly fairly late well late-ish in the evening and i knew the sun was going down and i wanted to get it set up well in time for sunset so yeah there wasn't much time to loiter and enjoy time in the tent i was getting set up and uh, yeah just hoping that i'd get everything all sorted and tea had so i could enjoy the sunset There we go. So that's uh, tea cooking now. <laughs> Need to leave that for about 10 or 15 minutes. Well, this is just uh, idyllic. I think I've got a really nice spot looking over the rest of the mountain now. The peaks over here are, are part of this ridge. It's called the Tarmacan Ridge. And the summit, which is up behind me here, which is where I did my bit to camera, 
is uh, is the highest point but it's by no means the best point the best point is this bit over here and the view here is fantastic there's a lovely little gnarly peak and just beyond that the ridge narrows and it's the best part of the walk i'm not going to do the full ridge today but i might depending on how much time i've got it's quarter to nine now but i might head over to this peak because i do have to drop down and get some water from the lochans down there uh, I did bring quite a lot of water up with me now, but I don't think I'll have enough for coffee in the morning. And I, I, when I scouted out a place to camp, I always try and find some water if it's possible. It can be quite hard in summit camps, but here there are two relatively large lochans. They do sit down, I think you have to drop maybe 60 or 70 metres to them, but it's not too bad. And as seeing, seeing as I'm going that way, I might just pop up to this peak, so I'll maybe uh, I'll report back when I'm doing that. But for the time being, I'm going to sit, enjoy my, uh, my late tea and just enjoy, enjoy these views, it's just fantastic. I can see right over to Ben Nevis tonight, Glencoe, and as I said, it's just the layers and layers of mountains. I can even see Aaron. Fantastic. What an evening. There's quite a lot of sheep about as well, I don't know if you can hear them. <laughs> They're bleating away. Do sheep bleat, or is that goats? I can't remember. Shut up, Right, there's a tent behind me. I'm actually heading down now to see if I can get some water and then I might see if I can head up this peak that I was talking about, the one that's quite impressive. Let me spin round so you can see it. That one in the centre of the picture. Meal garb it's called. So let's see how we go. We'll go down here, get some water, then I might head up and uh, see what it's like. It's about an hour till sunset. You see the sun setting behind me over there. But we've still got an hour until it goes down fully, so hopefully We'll get back up to the tent <laughs> for sunset or before it's dark. Right, let's go and see if we can get up this peak. It really was just a perfect summer's evening and as I headed down to the Lochans to get some water the sun was lowering out in the northwest skies and the clouds were starting to go that lovely orangey way. I was really looking forward to my evening ahead. Anyway, I still had some tasks to do so I, once I got down to the Lochan I spent a bit of time just collecting some water and filtering it so I'd have some water for the next morning. I did bring quite a lot of water with me uh, on this trip, just in case these lochans were really, really stagnant, but the, the water here wasn't too bad. Anyway, water collected, and I decided to nip up to the, the peak that I was talking about, Mealgarb, which sits, it's, it's another peak over a thousand metres, but it really is the the highlight of the Termakin Ridge, and I um, there was no way I was going to get back to the tent for sunset, so I decided on heading up Mealgarb to sit and enjoy the sun going down over the Scottish Islands. I was looking forward to that. Place. This is oh, nice wee seat here. Absolutely fantastic. I can see my tent away, <laughs> way over yonder. But uh, yeah, this is this is a summit called Meal Garb. And as I said before, it's not the highest point on the ridge, but it's certainly, in my opinion, the best point. And there's a ridge just beyond here. I'm not going to do it because I need to get back to the tent. Um, but it's, it's, it's only about 20 or 30 metres. It's a lovely wee narrow ridge with a wee path going along it. In conditions like this, it's fine. In the winter, it can be a bit tricky. But yeah, what a place, I don't know if you can make it out, but the sun, big round orange ball is just dropping 
right now over the horizon just to the east of Ben Nevis. Absolutely fantastic. What a great evening it's been. Um, and over behind me I can see there's fog starting to roll in from the, uh, from the east coast. So you never know, I might wake up above, uh, above some, some cloud tomorrow. Uh, certainly I've had that up here before. But yeah, what a place, fantastic. I'm just going to sit here a bit longer, watch that sun go down and get back to the tent and have the rest of my tea so I didn't actually finish it. Wow. After watching the sunset, which was fabulous, it was time to head back down past the Lochins and back up to the tent. And I could tell, looking looking south and east, it just seemed that there was a change in the weather and this happened almost immediately as the sun went down. And by the time I got down to the Lochins where I'd collected the water, there was a mist just hovering over the top and, and forming over the top of these Lochins. And it didn't take long for the weather to change, as you'll see very shortly. Oh, I've just picked up my water from the walking. And look how quickly it can change, that's the fog forming. I don't know if you can make out, just through the fog, the peak of his own real garb. Yeah, but as soon as that sun went down, that fog's rolled in from the east. So, uh, who knows if it's going to envelop us or whether we wake to an inversion in the morning, that'd be nice. Oh, bit atmospheric. <laughs> Ooh, up here we go. Wow, well, that's been a pretty, pretty amazing evening. So just after I uh, came off the summit, all well, the clouds now enveloping me, just before I came off the, or just after I came off the summit, I did notice the, the fog was moving in because the sun had gone down. And I've just watched the, uh, the fog rolling in the valley below me and uh, the other peak kind of peeking out over the top of it. It was fantastic, but it's rising now, so we're, <laughs> we're kind of getting enveloped, as you can see by this fog, but it's just absolutely fantastic. It's lovely, it's just so atmospheric. This is why I don't believe in ghosts and ghouls because this is the <laughs> prime conditions for them. It's just this, it must be the heat of the, the sun with that dipping, it's just allowed all the, the moisture to, to rise up into the hills. So, I'm quite excited about the morning now, but uh, I'm gonna shut up now. I'm gonna go and chill in the tent and then probably call it, a, call it a night, it's half past 10 now, so I'll set the alarm for about half four to get out for, for sunrise, so we'll see you in the morning. So I retired to the tent and I, I did sit for a good half an hour with the door opening, just watching the clouds drift by. And sometimes they would lower so I could see the views of the rest of the highlands and then within a few minutes the cloud would roll in again and just envelop the tent. It, it was very, very atmospheric as I said. Really, really nice conditions. And I was hoping, beyond hope, that the next morning I might wake and be above the clouds. Although I've been in that position before and nothing's happened. But my fingers were crossed and soon it was time to hit the hay, turn the lights out and hope for the best the following morning. Morning folks, it's uh, 20 past 4 in the morning, I woke up about, I don't know, 10 minutes ago, I made the mistake of leaving the door open last night but the fog had obviously come in, <laughs> yeah it's uh, quite a bit of condensation inside the tent now, because it's, it's quite blowy, but anyway, um, yeah I've not opened the door up yet, I'm going to open it up and see 
look like it is outside. Uh, we've got another maybe 20 minutes till sunrise, so I'm gonna yeah, I'm gonna get up, but let's just uh, let's have a look and see if we've got this inversion or whether it's still foggy like it was about a, an hour or two ago. Alright. It was still early, but I tell you what, seeing this this inversion, this temperature inversion, and the clouds being below me, soon got me going. Didn't even need a coffee to, to jump out of my tent. I was really keen now to, to try and catch the sunrise and go and have a look at the views with the mountains poking above the clouds. There really isn't anything better than when you wake up on a wild camp and find that you've got inversion conditions. It's a special, special moment, and one that I was going to enjoy greatly over the next hour or two. <laughs> well, this is just absolutely perfect. I don't think I could have got better conditions for my wild camp. Uh, I've just come up to the next wee sort of uh, knoll. The summit's just over here. Um, and I, I was going to camp up here last night, but the, the next sort of uh, flat bit further down just seemed to be uh, just a wee bit better for, uh, for the pitch. But it, wasn't, it was only like a two minute walk up here. And my God, look at these views. This is this is like the hill walkers uh, Shangri-La. <laughs> I can't wake it up above the cloud. I'm so so excited that we're um, probably about five minutes away from sunrise. So I've just been uh, up here taking pictures and doing some time lapses and what have you. Um, this over here, which is rising out of the cloud, is Ben Lors, like I said yesterday. But this is just absolutely amazing. Everything south of here will be uh, people will be waking up to a rather dull day, but. In a minute, the sun's gonna brighten everything up, and uh, yeah, it's just it's just great. So, yeah, I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna stay up here, watch the sunrise, and then we'll head back down to the tent, get some coffee, straight camp, and then uh, probably head home. But I'll probably be taking my time with uh, lots of photographs because it doesn't get any better than this. Woohoo! <laughs> Look at that! Oh, amazing! After spending some time watching that sunrise, it was just perfect. I headed back to the tent and decided it was time to have some breakfast. So I set about getting a brew on. This has just been absolutely wonderful. It's now time where we at. Yeah, 
it's just about quarter to six in the morning and I couldn't have asked for more really uh, these are the conditions that I always <laughs> dream of when I plan my wild camps and I don't know how many times I've gone to bed the night before and I think I said it last night I, th I said there could be an inversion this morning when that fog started to, to roll in but I don't know how many times I've said that and, and it's never happened um, in fact just probably one of the more recent videos that you saw maybe last week or the week before was in sky and I was kind of thinking I might get above the clouds <laughs> and then I ended up having to turn back before I even got to the summit because it was uh, it was pretty grim shall we say but this makes it this makes up for it all and you really just have to put yourself out there um, maybe one one in every 20 trips you'll get this maybe not as much as that the, the forecasts are getting better but certainly more times than not you don't get these conditions when you could get them or they're maybe forecast but this is just this wasn't forecast um, by the way uh, the, the M was and my office didn't say anything about an inversion so I've uh, I've struck gold today shall we say but sometimes you've just got to get out there and uh, take the chance and the more times you do that the higher the probability of you getting conditions like these but it's just fantastic I don't know how many times I'm going to bore you by saying that but um, the views over these mountains you can see Ben Moore and Stabinian above the cloud away out west Ben Nevis and Moors, Glencoe, Neil Gurdy ah it's just lovely so I'm just going to finish my coffee here and then we're straight camp and then I'm going to enjoy a lovely walk back down until I hit the cloud level So I enjoyed my coffee with, yeah, views to die for. It just, <laughs> as I said before, waking up in these conditions makes it the perfect, perfect way to, to, to end the night in the mountain. Anyway, coffee had, it was soon time to do that. That task that I never look forward to, which is breaking down camp. And uh, yeah, I soon got the tent away and all the, all the gear back into the backpack, ready for my hike back down. But I really was looking forward to the hike back down because this, isn't, this inversion wasn't moving and I was going to get some spectacular views all the way back down until, uh, yeah, until I reached the cloud and went into it and under it. I was looking forward to it for a change. So with the bag finally packed, it was time to saddle it, get it on my shoulders, remind myself what uh, a heavy pack feels like <laughs> after hauling it up the night before. Yeah, as I said, I had a spring of my step knowing that the, the conditions were going to be fab on the way down and I soon had to make a short ascent up to the summit of Mielnantermakin, which means round hill of the Ptarmigan, by the way. And uh, yeah, you can see from here, the views were just spectacular. I was having a whale of the time. Ooh. Right, <sighs> I've left. <laughs> you can see the mountain I've come down over there, Mielnantermakin. And the wee sharp peak over here, that was uh, Meal Garve where I was last night. It's just lovely. Still lovely. Look at this. Still above the clouds. But in a minute, I'm going to be dropping down underneath the cloud layer. And I, every now and again, I'm getting my broken spectre down behind me here. So I might get them broken a few times on the way down. But uh, another fabulous trip. Uh, lovely summer. Lovely summer conditions. You don't often see that in Scotland. <laughs> Brilliant. So, yeah, thanks for watching. I'm going to end the video here. Uh, stay safe out there as always, and I'll see you on the next adventure. Right, let's go.